In the 90s, they called us Drunk Town USA because there were so many drunks around here. People were literally dying in or outside the bars. Just like drinking themselves to death. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow. With a violent crime rate 111% above the national average, New Mexico is by far the most dangerous state in the nation. And while New Mexico is full of dangerous cities and towns, with Albuquerque commonly being referred to as the carjacking capital of the world, the city that I'm now entering, Gallup, New Mexico, is actually its most dangerous city. But Gallup's crime is a little bit puzzling, because for a town with a violent crime rate 320% above the national average, the murder rate of just 50% above the national average is relatively low. St. Louis or Baltimore, for example, have overall violent crime rates lower than Gallup's, yet their murder rates are 1,010% and 698% higher, respectively. Now, Gallup is a city of around 21,000 people in northwestern New Mexico, around 20 miles east of the Arizona border, around 140 miles west of Albuquerque, which is the closest major city, and 185 miles west of Flagstaff, Arizona. It's also in the center of many Native American lands, with the Zuni Reservation and the Rama Reservation being directly south, and of course the largest reservation in the entire country, Navajo Nation, being directly north of it. And as such, Gallup has been an epicenter of trade between tribes for centuries, and still is today, providing services and being the transportation and financial hub for around 120,000 people in this whole surrounding region. And to go off of that, as we are now about to enter the downtown area alongside this massive freight train, how about we park the car and get into the history of why this city exists in this very remote part of the country and why it's become so dangerous over the years. And get your kicks on historic Route 66. Yes, the famous historic transcontinental highway went through Gallup when it first opened back in 1926 and Gallup was actually quite the tourist attraction back in the day between the 1930s and 1960s, as you can see by many historic buildings still remaining in the town. Straight in front of me is the Lexington Hotel, which was built in 1930. Eventually, it went out of business, as did a lot of buildings in the town of Gallup. I think that's going to be a recurring theme. And it actually became a homeless shelter in the 2010s, I think it's officially been out of commission. Nobody's lived in it, no one's used it since 2018, however. I think all of these storefronts are actually completely, completely abandoned. Now, this whole area was originally inhabited by the ancestral Puebloans from around 300 to 1200 AD. And many of their Pueblos are still in the area. They're still able to be visited today. We're actually going to be visiting one of them later today. But from around 1700 to the present day, members of the Navajo tribe and the Zuni Pueblo have lived in and around Gallup. And they still have a major presence here today. Wow, there's just beautiful art. I wonder if this was all painted by different Native American artists as I know Gallup is a hub of Native American art. Now, the modern city was founded in 1881 as the headquarters for the Southern Transcontinental Rail Route. It's those exact rail tracks that are still standing parallel to Route 66. A man named David Gallup was actually the paymaster at the time that the railroad came through town in 1881. And since all the workers working on the railroad had to quote unquote, go to Gallup to collect their checks, that's kind of how the town got its name. I feel like that screeching noise from the train tracks is similar to what it was 140 years ago when this town was first founded. It is not good on the ears. The city was incorporated in 1891 and it became the county seat of McKinley County, which is this whole surrounding region of about 73,000 people in 1901. Now, unlike other railroad cities, which sure had a boom, but have since died off, the railroad still has a major presence in Gallup and plays a major role in the town's economy, with around 100 freight and two passenger trains passing through daily. You might have heard of a famous pole called Gallup Poles. Previously, I always thought that Gallup Poles was from Gallup, New Mexico, but it's actually just a complete coincidence. There's no correlation between this town or David Gallup. It's just named after a different person that was also named Gallup. Here in front of me, we have the Rex Museum, which is an old historic building that was built in the late 1800s. It was originally called Angeles Hotel. It later went on to become a brothel. This was an old Wild West Railroad town. As I'm sure you can imagine, there was a lot of lawlessness. It then went on to become the Rex Hotel in the 1930s, later a bowling alley, a liquor store, a grocery store, and finally the Rex Hotel 
that you see in front of me right now. Unfortunately, it appears to be closed for maintenance, and normally the hours are very strange. Wait. Yeah, it is definitely closed, but apparently there's some really cool exhibits in there showcasing the town's history as both a railroad and mining town back to the 1800s. And I guess speaking of that, while this railroad across the street from me is the reason the Gallup was created in the first place, the main reason for the city's growth and its original nickname, Carbon City, was due to coal being found in the surrounding hills back in 1882. Over the next few decades, many mining camps sprung up within a 10 mile radius, including one we're going to be checking out later today as well. Now, the mining companies and the railroad were the main employers in the area, which attracted a lot of money from rich investors out east, as well as many European and Asian immigrants who moved to town for the economic opportunities. And in that period from around 1888 to the early 1900s is when most of these buildings were built, including over here, the Kitchens Opera House, which was originally built in 1895 with the second floor being an opera house and a saloon and cafe were on the first floor. Now it appears that there are different Native American trading posts and I believe the most famous Native American trading post in town is this one directly to the right, the Richardson Trading Post, which has been selling Native American arts and crafts since 1913. I think it is open, so let's go inside and check it out. Due to Gallup's close proximity to so many Native American reservations and pueblos, apparently 80% of all Native American art comes through Gallup, and it means that Gallup actually has some of the cheapest prices for really cool Native American art and jewelry. Wow, this is just beautiful. Hey, how you doing? Hi, wow. How are you? Good. Welcome. This is gorgeous. And I'm here with Larry at the Richardson Trading Post. How long have you lived in Gallup? 28 years. 28 years, wow. Um, and where did you live before then? Montana. Mon and why did you decide to move down to Gallup? Because of my interest in the Indian trade. Okay, and this whole like Richardson Trading Post is mostly indigenous art, It's right? all Native American. All okay. of our products are handcrafted Native American. This is the oldest and largest continual operating trading post in existence. The Richardson family opened in Arizona in the 1850s. They've been in Gallup 112 years. What is the biggest misconception people have about Gallup? Well, people think it's small, number one, but they also think it's a, a very depressed area. And it, you wouldn't say it is? I don't think so. Okay. I, I believe we have a great town, wonderful people. And to go off of that, have you witnessed any poverty or crime? Well, there's poverty and crime everywhere, but no more so here than any other place. So you think it's a lot of it's overblown? I think so. What would you say is your favorite thing about living in Gallup? I like the products that the Native American make. They're naturally artistic. Gallup is surrounded by reservations. I'm very interested in their jewelry, the rugs that they make. It's beautiful, yeah. All, all of their crafts. What are the main jobs outside of Native American crafts. We don't have an awful lot of industry here, but the big employer is like Walmart, Home Depot. So it's mostly retail? Retail stores. Is the railroad still a big? Uh... It is, we, we do have a lot okay. of railroad employment. So obviously the city is pretty diverse and it always has been. Do people mesh very well or have you witnessed people that stay to their groups? No, we, it's a good mix. But everyone kind of gets along we, with everyone. We enjoy Yes, we enjoy a good mix. The majority of the population are Native American. Is Gallup large enough where you have most of your amenities and services that you need? We have, all, we have almost everything we need in Gallup. So how often would you say you drive to Albuquerque? Maybe once a month. Thank you so much, Larry. You're welcome. You have a pleasant day. So how many artists are, do you guys uh, sell the products of? 150. 150, wow. And it's all from the reservations in the surrounding yes. region? Okay. And it's all authentic stones. Yeah, I've heard Gallup is like one of the cheapest places to get the stuff because it all comes through here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Santa Fe will take it, double it sometimes. Oh, wow. Is this a albino bison? It isn't authentic. Oh, okay. I was like, wow. It is a bison. Yeah, just beautiful, beautiful pieces. This is stunning. The rugs are all Navajo woven. They're all done on a look. There's no picture, no pattern, no sketch. They look at nothing. They sit down and make them. It's all just from... All from their mind. Wow. Genius people. This place is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. And all of this art is so unique. I don't think I've seen two things that look like anything that I've seen before. Is there another room back here? Two more, oh wow. Because we only have the one entrance. Okay. But then we cut 
hole in the wall so to get access to all of these buildings. Look at that. What material is this made out of? It's all glass beads. Glass, wow. And the person too is glass? Miniature glass beads. That is unreal. So I'm currently sitting at my family home in Boston editing this video, and I just realized a lot of you might be thinking, wow, all of this Native American art is beautiful, but also probably really expensive. Would I even be able to afford it? And I'd probably think the same until I discovered Rocket Money, today's sponsor. Rocket Money is a personal finance app which helps you lower your bills, cancel subscriptions, and manage your money better. Before using it, I didn't even realize I was being charged nearly $100 a month for subscriptions that I hadn't used in months. Plus, they'll help negotiate your cable, internet, and phone bills and analyze your spending habits to create a custom budget that works best for your lifestyle. Altogether, Rocket Money has saved its 5 million members up to $740 a year with over five. $500 million in canceled subscriptions. So if you want to spend less and save more, go to rocketmoney.com slash FHTT or click the first link in the description to get started for free. And you can unlock even more features with premium. But let's get back to my adventure in Gallup. And here we have yet another massive train going by. Looks like there's an Amazon Prime cart. After leaving the Richardson Trading Post, it appears that there is some altercation on 3rd Street. But to get back into the history of Gallup and the city's initial coal boom, there was a huge economic disparity between the miners and the investors. And the investors often provoked infighting between their employees to prevent labor movements from arising. Despite their efforts, however, in 1917, the United Mine Workers negotiated a labor contract with one of the town's biggest coal companies at the time. But the town's other large mining company, Gallup American Coal Company, wasn't unionized. So when the miners struck, instead of allowing them to strike, they just brought in new workers from Mexico. Oh, there is just stunning art surrounding this entire town. And there really are just so many trading posts. I think this is Apache trading post. Now, of course, on November 11th, 1926, this very famous road, Route 66, officially opened to the public, cutting through Gallup and leading to the creation of many businesses, restaurants, shops, galleries, popping up and down 2nd Street, which is... This street right here. Gallup is the largest city between Albuquerque and Flagstaff, so it naturally led to a lot of people, quite a bit of traffic, coming into town. Hey, how you guys doing again? You're busy. Yeah. Thanks for getting Larry to do I knew once he started, because you're a nice guy, he'll chill. He's yeah, no, he was great. So freaked out. It's so weird. All right, thank you guys. Yeah. Oh, look down this alley. Oh, that's where the police car was earlier. It seems like the altercation is still ongoing. But yes, Gallup became a very popular filming location for many Western films. John Wayne famously lived in Gallup for actually quite some time. Over here we have Art 123. I think this is a really cool art studio. It only opens at 2 p.m. So if I'm still in town at two, I definitely wanna come back. It apparently has a lot of really cool indigenous art. And over here on the right, we have the El Moro Theater. Speaking of Western films, this theater was originally built in 1928. It's a 460-foot theater. It was remodeled in 2015, and they still show films today. It's also home to the Gallup Film Festival every year and is reportedly haunted. Let's go and check it up up here. Hey, how you doing? The El Moro Theater and Event Center. Oh, looks like they're playing the Wolverine and Deadpool film. And they have Hook, The Goonies. I wonder if they're open every day or if it's just like limited showings. Historic downtown Gallup. So I think the main street in town is actually the street called Cole Avenue. How fitting of a name given its history. And to get back to the town's contentious history over Cole, in 1933, the National Miners Union actually moved to town and called for an even bigger strike than the initial strike, which led to picket lines at the town's five largest mines and around 970 of the thousand total miners in Gallup at the time joining the strike. Now, of course, this caused a lot of problems to the economic interests of the investors and the few very wealthy companies in town. So New Mexico's governor at the time actually declared martial law and sealed off the town for five months. And since Gallup American Coal Company, which had become the city's largest employer by this point, had given lots of cheap housing to their miners, they wanted to evict anyone that striked but couldn't legally. 
So instead they sold their land to a man named Clarence Vogel, who in turn increased the housing price tenfold, which effectively evicted many of these families. Now there were three families who refused to vacate, so Vogel actually arrested them on April the 3rd, 1935, which led to a massive riot with the sheriff and two other men fatally being shot in this very alley. 180 union members were arrested, and I believe there should be a mural up here somewhere that depicts this whole riot that took place 89 years ago. And the mural that depicted those events on April the 3rd, 1935, is directly in front of me. Apparently there are nine hand-painted murals that depict a lot of the town's history, all scattered throughout downtown. But this one right here is that riot. Policemen on horseback, mayhem, miners striking. Wow, that is just a beautiful. Oh, and there's someone firing the gun. I wonder if that's the gun that went off. And of course, the fist that is so defiant and representative of strikes. Now, by the 1950s, most of the coal production had severely decreased as America shifted to other sources of energy. And almost all of the mines in the area were closed by the 1960s. Since then, obviously, there's been quite a bit of poverty and economic depression in the town of Gallup, which so heavily relied on the coal industry. Now, of course, Larry was telling me that the Native American arts and crafts industry is the main employer in town apart from the railroad, but I'm just not sure if there's enough money in this trade to support a town of 20,000 people and a county with around 73,000. But yeah, these murals, I am so genuinely surprised by how much art is in this town. Just judging from the buildings, how many are abandoned, how many looked derelict and not taken care of, the city's heyday is very far behind it, obviously. But it doesn't really feel like the city is quote unquote dangerous. Yes, it definitely looks like there is poverty, but everyone that I've come in contact with has been incredibly friendly. Obviously there was that police car, but nothing about this town has made me feel like, oh, this is sketchy. I shouldn't go down this street. It just looks like any old American Western town, which used to have a lot of industry, lost its industry and isn't in the best shape anymore. The train horn is beeping, but over here we have a mural for Jerry's Cafe, depicting Jerry's actual cafe, which is right across the street. I've heard this is some of the best food in town, Mexican-American food. It looks like there's a line outside the cafe. Probably good. What's up? My mural right this is your mural. Oh wow! All people in line at Jerry's? Yeah, I've heard it's great, right? Well, yeah, I got all people waiting in line. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Oh wow, you guys are painting down here too. Yeah. So we make this world a beautiful place. Uh, so are you ready? Yeah. So I'm directly across the street from Jerry's Cafe with the artist, Eric, who painted this beautiful mural for Jerry's Cafe. Eric, how long have you lived in Gallup? Um, since 70, 78. Oh wow, you've been here a long time. Yeah, I painted the town. You, you've done most all the murals I've done town. a lot of murals around town, yeah. I did the city hall. So why did you decide to move to Gallup? Because uh, my dad lived here. He was a contractor. So I learned the trade of construction. But I was a carpenter inside an artist's body. So I had to break free and just create. And so when did you start painting the murals in town? Uh, first off, I started with Christmas windows, Christmas window art. And then somebody wanted a sign and they wanted a mural. So I did a mural and the rest is history. Why did you decide to paint this uh, Jerry's Cafe? Is this your favorite restaurant in town? Well, you know, Jerry's is real popular. Uh, as you can see, people are waiting in line right there. Yeah, and it's, uh, what's the day today, Friday? Yeah, well, it's the first, first was yesterday, and government checks are issued for the Native Americans, so it's a good booster for the local economy. So what I did is I just put a collage of people in line. You can see that big head right there? You see that, that guy yeah. with the cowboy hat? So I incorporated him, you know, I oversized them. Like oh, I'm, like, yeah. That sign right there is that sign. As you come over here, you could see the businesses going down Cole Street, you know, Rico Motors over there, Don's Transmission, and this John's Juice car lot. And then you have like the timid little Navajo kids, and then the pregnant lady and the chief at the front of the door. And you got kids just doing what they're doing, and then you got the old school traders, the white man trading coffee and sugar for rugs. So this is like an old depiction well, of- It's old, but it's modern, the new with the old. And then, you know, we're famous for chili. It's either green or red chili. Actually, right over here is the owner of the building. He loves to play cards. 
So I put them in, and this is a- The owner of this building here. Yeah, you know, he likes to play cards. So this is an old Shazam painting, the card players, and you got the traditional Native Americans, you know, they come to Gallup, they load them up in the back truck, and let's go to Jerry's. Have you had the food yet? No, I'll yeah. try it out at some point. And I guess to go off of this mural, mm -hmm. obviously the town is very diverse. Is there contention between the different ethnicities? No, or is you it know, mostly? I've never felt so much harmony when I came to New Mexico, because I'm from California originally, you know, oh, okay. school there. And I came here and it was like the white got along with the black. The black got along with the Native Americans. It's pretty chilled, you know? But I'm sure there's some kind of uh, segment nowadays, you know? We're being divided as a nation. I don't feel it here. And I read that Gallup is the most dangerous city in New Mexico. Do you feel that no, walking around? I hear that everywhere. In every city you go to, it's the most dangerous. It's dangerous if you're in the wrong company. So have you seen, like, things happening in town? You know, I've seen a few things, but I live in harmony with everyone. I tell everyone hi. What's your favorite thing about living in Gallup? Um, where everyone knows your name. So you know everyone in town? Well, I don't know everyone. I don't want to know everyone, <laughs> but if I need work, I'll tell them, well, go look at Jerry's. There's my work. Let me show you these cans I'm painting. Oh yeah, I was seeing those earlier. And why do you think Gallup has this really artistic energy? Because the Navajos are artistic, so it opens the doors for everyone. So we're redoing these trash cans. Well, these are planters, and this theme right here is sunflowers. Yeah. So this is sunflower lane right here, and we so got this, all flowers. Yeah. So these are sunflowers here. These sunflowers are dying, and then you come right here, and there's a woman that's facing that way. From what I heard, all women like sunflowers. Does she like sunflowers? Yep. I dedicated this for her. And here's another one, sunflowers, and if you look right here, mm -hmm. she's got sunflower eyes. Oh, wow. And you painted all of these? Yeah, I started it this week. And then there's another one over here. This might be... The city called you in to do it? Yeah. And what would you say is the general sentiment in the city? Is it hopeful? Is it depressed? Um, well, I can only speak on my own behalf and mm -hmm. I'm optimistic. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the other sunflower set. And if you come right here, you see a woman. I can tell you're a very, very artistic guy. And see, like the other ones across the street, other artists painted them, so I'm not going to touch those, but there's some that are really bad. Killing and... Are most people that you know in town, are they pretty optimistic? Uh, yeah. I, you know, I hang around with positive people, but you see a lot of homeless people walking around. And... Is there anything you would want to change about the city or you'd like to see improved? Oh, yeah, I mean, the infrastructure, you know, the roads, but that's just everywhere USA. People ask me, what do I do? And I tell them I make the world a beautiful No, place. You've, you've definitely made Gallup a, a lot more beautiful than it would be without your paintings, yeah. Yeah, very good. And let's check out the inside of Jerry's Cafe real quick. I've been hearing a lot about this place. They need to grow a little bit bigger. Is there always a wait? No. Always a wait? Wow, this is cool. <laughs> City Electric Shoe Shop. Boots and belts, moccasins, leather supplies. Established in night. There are so many trains that just go literally every 10 minutes. There's another locomotive. I think there's definitely over a hundred trains each day. I wonder if this City Electric shoe shop is still open. A lot of these trading posts seem to be closed and appear that they haven't been opened in years. Like that's a completely empty storefront here in downtown. Oh, it is open. Okay, let's check this one out. Yeah, they got Lots of shoes. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good, and you? Good. Where are you from? <laughs> uh, from Vegas. Vegas, oh. Okay. Yeah, so I'm here with Rose, and this place is called the City, City Electric Shoe Shop. City Electric Shoe Shop. So it's been in operating for 100 years now? Yeah, 100 years. Yeah. Okay, where exactly do you live in the area? Uh, out Vanderwagen, New Mexico. Vanderwagen. Oh, it's that... south, south of Gallup, about 32 miles. Out. Near the Zuni? Uh... Yeah, Zuni Reservation. Oh, Zuni Reservation. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about living in this part of the country? Well, I'm close to work. My relatives are around. So you have tons yeah. of family in, yes. in Zuni? Not what? Zuni, but the Navajo Reservation. Oh, Navajo, yeah. okay. Are you, so you're in Navajo? Uh -huh. Yes. And what do you think is the biggest misconception people have about Gallup and what life is like here? Well, it's mostly like shopping, that's about it. Is that everything there is to do in Gallup, is just shopping? Uh, 
that's where we buy grocery, whatever we need. There's no other place around. So this is the area where everybody shops. So from everyone in all the reservations yes. comes to Gallup. It's yes. like the main hub. Yes, oh, there okay. go. Do you know what the main jobs in town are? Uh, mostly like, I would say sales clerk, selling burgers. Uh -huh. and, and obviously this area is very diverse. Have you had issues with people of other races? And No, no. no. I've been here for 50 years. So and everyone gets along well? Yeah. We've gone to war yet. No, just kidding. <laughs> Well, I've heard it's also, it's quite dangerous here. Do you feel that? Mm, I feel, sometimes I do feel it, but you know, it's just everywhere around, wherever you go, it, there is danger. There's going to be Indian tribal ceremony, they call it. We okay. have it every year. And it's just once a year? Yeah. Oh, and when is, what day is that exactly? It's in August, next month, next week. That's what I was trying next to Next week? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm kind of getting old. I can't remember my Oh, notes. no. It's just, <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Rose. You're welcome. And then there's a, a poster there if you want to catch it. <laughs> I was going to say something, but Grandma's going to get mad. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at these boots. Are we doing? And these are some of the jewelry pieces. Quite affordable pricing, actually. Here's some more of those painted trash cans along the Main Street Coal Avenue. It seems like every single one of them has some type of art on them. And yeah, just looking at this Main Street, there's quite a few old edifices. It seems like half of them are somewhat abandoned or haven't really been shops in a while. Oh, over here, there's CBD. I do believe marijuana is legal in the state of New Mexico. So I wonder if there's any dispensaries in town. Red Rock Insurance, yeah, a lot of the Gallup Solar. It does not look like this building is in use at all. And it probably hasn't been for quite some time. I did wake up at around 5.30 a.m. this morning, however, so I'm starting to get a little bit of that afternoon crash. Here we have the Gallup Coffee Company. Let's go in there, let's get a coffee. I normally actually edit my videos in coffee shops. This looks like it would be a beautiful place to just sit and work for a while. Hey, how you guys doing? Wow, this is this is beautiful. I love the open layout. This is really cool. Thank you. So I got a hatch red chili pepper mocha, and it is absolutely delicious. Let's check out the rest of this Gallup Coffee Company, though. Beautiful seating area, and then there's this kitchen area almost. Hey. Oh, this is like the other workstation. Yeah, this is cool. So it's like there's two shops in one. And as I continue to sip on this absolutely delicious red chili mocha, Tracy, the main roaster in there, gave me a few suggestions of a few places I should check out. The first being a place up here called Weaving in Beauty, which apparently is owned by someone who has been here for generations. So this is the storefront here. Weaving in Beauty. Smile, you're on camera. Hey, how you guys doing? Hello, fine, thank you. I don't buy anything from somebody I don't know. And are they mostly Navajo or is it? They're mostly Navajo. I think we've got one piece that's Bilagana artist. That's it. I don't sell any of my work. Oh, so you make rugs as well? I know how to, I learned oh, how okay. to weave Navajo style oh, wow. 50 years ago. So I do repairs, I'm working on this one. Oh. Well, that story is don't buy a Chihuahua, but. <laughs> and are there any other places you recommend I really check out to get a good feel of Gallup? Uh, Kestrel leather. Kestrel Okay, Tracy was telling me Kestrel leather as well. Okay. Thank you. Everyone has been so nice here. Like even if there's a green light, they literally just tell me to cross the street. I have not felt a quote unquote dangerous vibe whatsoever. Maybe I'm just not in the right areas. Maybe there are, I'm sure there are parts of the city which are dangerous. The crime rate is very high. But in terms of fearing for my life, I haven't witnessed anything that would make me afraid. This is Kestrel leather. Back on Route 66, apparently all handcrafted goods. Wow. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So you walking around earlier talking to yourself. And this is Koi, the owner and artist at Kestrel Leather. You pretty much made all of the pieces that we see in front of us over here. Correct, myself and I have a guy who works here that helps me. And you were just telling me recently that you were born and raised in Gallup and you've lived here for three generations? Correct. How has the city, if at all, changed in your time here? Um, 
Oh man, that's a good question. I mean, it's changed a lot. It's a great place to raise a family. We have a lot of people that move here to teach and work in the hospital. Oh, there's a hospital in town. Oh yeah, a hospital. And then there's a Christian school here that is a big mission school. And it's been there for 120 years. So is the hospital the main employer in town or? Um, no. Ooh, that's a good question who the main employer is. Maybe the Navajo tribe. Navajo tribe's the largest Native American tribe in the North America. Yeah. So they've got 300,000 people. The railroad does a lot. What's your favorite thing about living in Gallup? Oh, good question. Now, why have you stayed this whole time? Probably the slower timetable. So people around here move just a lot slower. Businesses are open when they're open. It's not as much of a rushing town like you see in other spots. And a lot of that is from the Navajos and the Zunis, the two native tribes. They kind of move at a slower pace and it's just kind of taken over everyone else. And I really enjoy that. And the people, we have a lot of people here that for lack of a better word, they're not jonesing. All of my friends, we don't compete to see who's got the newer truck or the newer camper. It's a very mellow city. Yeah, I've noticed even though it's very diverse, it seems everyone gets along Correct. pretty well, yeah. And you have to. I and mean, we have some huge populations. We have a large Arab population. We have a large Filipino population. Oh, really? The Italians, the Slovaks all came here on the railroad. This was a huge coal city. This whole city was founded on coal because the train was here. There's a lot of diversity. But then you learn to live with it, and then you learn that it's a lot better than living in just one community. Yeah, no, for a city this of this size, I've never seen a place this diverse, I'd say. Correct. Country, at least. I mean, it's it's a small city of 25,000 people, but we serve two reservations. So the first of the month on a weekend when everyone gets paid, we could have 75,000, 100,000 people in town. Our Walmart is one of the top grossing Walmarts in the nation because it serves such a huge rural area. So Gallup is a pretty remote part of the country. Do you find that you can get everything that you need in Gallup? Yeah. We're remote, but we sit on the rail line. That's pulling containers from the big port in LA and it's moving them all the way to Chicago. So does Interstate 40. When we drive to Albuquerque, that's our biggest city in New Mexico mm -hmm. and it's an easy two hour drive. And then you can order everything online. I've definitely noticed there's a lot of small business still thriving, even though Gallup's a pretty small city. Like most small town America seems to have lost all their small businesses. Why do you think Gallup has maintained that? Uniqueness. We have unique stuff that you don't see anywhere else in the world. Our native art is a great example. Stuff that the Navajos and the Zunis specifically make is stuff you can't replicate. It's the only place in the, place mm -hmm. in the, in the world to get it. And you see this stuff all over the place. So you'll see art from Gallup in Santa Fe at Yellowstone on the East Coast in China and Japan. Oh, really? Yeah, it, this stuff goes all over the all over the world, really. Part of my store is I'm still handcrafting leather. I've got a bunch of Native American weavings that we use and nobody else is doing it, but I have the source for it. So I took what was available to me and then made it usable. Like these rugs here, we turn them into bags, but the Navajo is the only tribe that weave those vertical rugs. Okay. Like and it's all hand woven. All hand woven. That's the reason why there's so much art in Gallup is just all the tribes? Correct. You know, a lot of families moved here in the late 1800s and set up trading posts and established those trade connections with the Navajo. And those relationships have just gone on forever. The Navajo are very loyal people and it's given them an, an outlet for their art. And some of these guys took that art and said, hey, this is great, let us market it. So what you do every day, we can make it saleable to other people and you can't reproduce it. People have tried, but. I read that statistically Gallup is the most dangerous city in New Mexico, but just walking around, it seems like everyone's pretty friendly. Is it like contained to a few areas or have you ever seen crime happen? I've heard this statistic and I don't understand it. So we have a lot of petty crime, specifically a lot of vandalism and just general people stealing stuff out of your car. And I think that's a cultural thing. This is my opinion that's been going on for three or 400 years. One tribe raids the other tribe, takes their stuff. That's how they measure wealth. And I think that's still how that's measured. But so you, you never feel like your life's in danger. Never seen it. anyone shot, never seen anyone stabbed. We have some inebriated people that are around, but most of them are pretty docile. They'll ask you for money, but they don't, they're not physical. Mm -hmm. I just, no, I raised my kids here. I was raised here and I didn't understand at the time, but that's why my parents stayed here. It's such a safe community, even though we have this, whatever that tab is that we're dangerous. And walking around, if it's a dangerous city, you should feel like yeah, no, you, you should feel a little bit scared and, and I don't know if you do. So what do you think that is or is there another thing that's the biggest misconception about Gallup? Uh, that's probably the biggest one. In the 90s, they did a TV special and they called us Drunk Town USA because there were so many drunks around here and it really, really hurt our city, really hurt the, the Navajo tribe. And it's something that we've been working on for, you know, since the city was formed, but that's a terrible misconception also. So you don't think there's a drunk problem in town anymore? Oh no, I, I still think we have a problem, but I don't know how you fix it. And you can see it, especially in the mornings walking around, you'll see 
different. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. Yesterday it was really bad in the morning. Uh, today has been relatively quiet. And so. why do you think that is? is it Both reservations are dry. They don't let alcohol in the reservations. It's illegal. Genetically, a lot of native tribes can't handle alcohol. Very similar to how the Irish are. The Irish, the turn of the century, you know, they had a bad name for themselves. I think it's a genetic thing, so they just can't handle it like other people can. Like Italians can usually handle it. And again, these are my opinions. What would you say is the general outlook of the city? Does it seem pretty hopeful and optimistic or its best days are behind it? It's hard as a younger person to say our best days are behind us. I think there's always room for growth. Make better communities for kids. Make it safer for people visiting. No, I think our best days are ahead of us. Or what's the biggest change you would like to see to Gallup? Ah, oh, cleanliness. But that costs more. That costs money. Like in terms of the buildings upkeep or? Um, just the city itself, sidewalks. But we're still a rural community, so when it's wet, we have a lot of dirt comes into town on vehicles and uh... then it stays on our streets. You don't see that in Phoenix or Albuquerque because there's so much concrete. So when a lot of people live on dirt roads when it rains or especially in the spring after the winter, all that mud comes into town. So most of the reservations nearby are all dirt roads. Correct. And some of them are horrible dirt roads. People will park on the highway and have to walk a mile in the mud because they can't drive to their house. Oh damn. There's a lot of work to do there, but that's a whole nother yeah. interview. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Coy. You're welcome. That was great. And yeah. all of this art is... Beautiful, yeah. How long have you been, had this shop for? I've only been in here about four months. This location has been great. We're close to some really big names and we're on Route 66. The building is historic, 1895. It's the only two-story building in town. There's a whole opera house above. Oh, this is the opera house? Yeah, if you look oh, outside, you'll okay. see Kitchen's Opera House. Yeah. So what did this used this to be? This was called Eagle Cafe. So this was a cafe for oh, about wow. 130 years. Next door was a saloon and they both fed upstairs to the opera house. The landlord's back here actually, knows a lot more of the history. Original ceiling, original brick. Um, yeah, so this this was a restaurant, probably one of the longest running restaurants in New Mexico, I would think. And it was a big Japanese family that owned it. Really? Yeah, so Gallup has another little... There's a lot of Asian miners. There was, but it was mainly Japanese. You didn't see oh, a lot Japanese. of Chinese. And I've, I've talked to a lot of the older people in town, and there was four or five other restaurants. The Tatsukawa's owned this. But in the 40s, when Pearl Harbor happened and they started interning Japanese, Gallup was one of the few cities that said, you're not taking our Japanese. They're part of our community. You're not interring them. And, Jap and Gallup put their foot down and said, you're not doing it. It so. seems like Gallup's always been very diverse and right. somehow even back when everyone well, was welcome. But That's... I think it's living in all, with all these different people. Yeah. Like you just learn that you have to get along with people. It doesn't matter what color they are. There's good people and bad people. It doesn't matter what shade you are. But if you look at some of the older history, the governor, how Route 66 came through here, I was reading that Gallup was one of the only cities between Albuquerque and LA that had paved streets. Like we had two blocks of paved streets. So they were ahead of their time way back when. And so the original railway that went through town was the Santa Fe Railway. I wonder if that's an old cart or an old train cab that was used some 140 years ago. It looks very, very old. And there's some nice graffiti. I am going to go to the north section of town in just a little bit as I hear, or at least looking at the crime map, that appears to be where the majority of crime is. But right now we are going to head to the county courthouse. And here's a mural depicting, of course, Gallup's always diverse past in history. Kids of all different shapes and sizes carrying an American flag with a bald eagle. It's stunning to me how much art is in this town, how much history this town has had. It's still got so much life and soul, despite the town's lack of economic opportunities. The unemployment rate in August 2024, when I'm filming this video, is currently 6.6% in McKinley County, of which Gallup is the county seat and largest city. I also read that about 30% of employees in the county work for government institutions, whereas the US average is only around 15%. But right now I am coming up on the McKinley County Courthouse. I believe this is the courtyard area of the courthouse where different Native American tribes do dances every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, 6 p.m. They do a nice tribal dance just in this field. That would be stunning to watch. Unfortunately, today is a Friday, so I will not be able to witness that. This is a very big courthouse though. I think this side of the building is the original courthouse and that seems to be an extension. It seems like a lot of money has gone into that add-on. Now, the original portion of the McKinley County Courthouse was built in 1938. It's in the Spanish Pueblo Revival style. And there's apparently a really cool museum inside with a lot of history of Gallup, as well as a New Deal art collection. Oh, this part does not look very well kept. 
Uh, so I guess we are not entering the county courthouse over there. So I'm not sure exactly if the old part of the courthouse is still in use today. It appears that this side of the courthouse, which looks very refreshed. Oh, there's like a massive Native American statue in there. I wanna check out that art exhibit, but there appears to be some history from World War II here, prisoners of war. This is the grateful community honors these brave soldiers. So yeah, this is probably some World War II history. Oh, so I think this is talking about people who fought in each of these wars that were from Gallup. Oh, the Navajo Code Talkers, I heard about this. So during World War II, so that the Japanese and the Germans couldn't decipher communications between the allies, they actually used the Navajo language to be able to communicate without the messages being intercepted. But yeah, Korean War. Vietnam Space Force, look at that, December 2019. And City of Gallup founded in 1881. All gave some, some gave all. Remembering those lost. While there is an art museum inside of the county courthouse, apparently you have to join a tour through that Art 123 gallery that I saw earlier. Oh, what is this over here? It's almost like a, a hand-woven rug, but as an art installation made out of metal. That is so cool. New Mexico is truly a land of enchantment. Yes, it's apparently the most dangerous state in the nation, but there is so much art and there is so much natural beauty here as well. I genuinely think it's one of the most underappreciated and misunderstood states. But of course, high poverty is still an ongoing theme and issue in Gallup, New Mexico. It appears that this building is completely abandoned next to this just empty lot which doesn't look like anyone's really used for decades. But although high poverty typically leads to high crime as people who normally wouldn't commit crimes do when they are put in desperate situations, poverty isn't the only reason why the crime rate in Gallup is so high. So let's head back to the car, drive through a few of the not so nice neighborhoods and tell you why the city is so dangerous. And as soon as we leave the general vicinity of the downtown area, like this barbershop here, it appears almost all the buildings are completely abandoned, boarded up. I will say there's plenty of car dealerships for some reason in Gallup, New Mexico. Apparently Rico's over here is one of the original GMC dealerships in the country. And it's been in operation for at least a hundred years. I think back to like the 1920s. And there's yet another car dealership across the street from Rico's, which I guess spans three blocks. This is the Rico car wash. This is the initial Rico building, another Rico building, and then the overflow lot. And is this another overflow lot for Rico's? Apparently that old statue is at least 90 years old as well. Gallup has so much history. Before we get into the neighborhoods, however, how about we do a little driving tour of this main drag here in Gallup. This is Cole Avenue. Again, there's just art everywhere. Car dealerships and Native American art. Those are the two words that are synonymous with Gallup at this point on my adventure. This is that City Electric shoe shop that we went in earlier. But I really, really like this downtown. It's really cute for a city of only 20,000 people. Much nicer than most of Main Street America. Over here we have a downtown flea market. Thanks for visiting historic downtown Gallup. On my left we have the La Montañita Food and Co-op, where apparently you do not need a membership to enter. But I want to show you guys a little bit of the map of Gallup. We are going to head to the north side neighborhood, which is where the most crime on the crime map seems to occur. In the southeast over here is the Hills neighborhood, which is apparently the wealthiest part of Gallup. Some homes are over 500 grand. But as we head over to the north side neighborhood, I wanted to answer the question, why does Gallup have such a high crime rate? Now, New Mexico as a whole has the fourth highest poverty rate in the nation at 17.6%. Obviously, as I said earlier, higher poverty is typically correlated with higher crime and with an overall crime rate 62% above the national average and a violent crime rate that's 110% above the national average, New Mexico is by far the most dangerous state in the nation. And I think that truck is, or is that a boat in the back of the truck? Oh, it's water. I've actually heard 
a lot of the reservations nearby don't actually have running water. So a lot of people come to Gallup with huge water tanks, fill up their water, and then go back to their homes on the reservations. Now, the main factors that contribute to so many people committing crimes here are one, the intense poverty with the third highest rate of childhood poverty as well, which is even worse on the reservations. Two, many communities, including Gallup, are very remote. And while Gallup seems to have most of the services that you would need, a lot of these places really don't have services and people have to drive hours to come to a place like Gallup, which in its own right, isn't very big. Obviously to go along with the many small rural communities, there's a lack of jobs and opportunity, which combined with feelings of isolation leads to a lot of hopelessness which leads to high rates of alcohol and drug use. New Mexico has the most alcohol-induced deaths of any state and actually the highest rate of drug use and childhood drug use of any state. And Gallup, unfortunately, is this to an extreme. Since the nearby reservations are dry reservations, Gallup tries to profit off of this and actually has 30 different liquor stores despite the population only being 21,000. Unfortunately, the state also doesn't have very much funding, probably due to there not being much industry, which leads to poor quality social services for people dealing with addiction. And all of this combined with New Mexico having the worst education of any state and the lowest high school graduation rate of any state contributes to even more feelings of hopelessness and high crime throughout the state. And to get to the north side of town, of course, we have to cross a railroad crossing. And considering how long these massive freight trains are, it might be a while. Five minutes later. And it looks like the trade has finally finished. I was sitting here for probably around five minutes or so. And never mind, just as that train finished, it appears we have another train going in the other direction. And the trades have finally stopped. The railroad crossing is open. So we are heading over to the north side of Gallup. But to get back into the reasons of why Gallup is so dangerous, most of the crimes in Gallup are actually just from a lot of drunk people who are doing heinous acts while they're drunk. Apparently the bars at night can get a little rowdy and unfortunately domestic assault is also a serious issue here. But it really does appear that as long as you mind your own business and use street smarts, don't try to provoke anyone, you should be fine. And welcome to the north side of Gallup. This is apparently the most dangerous and poorest part of Gallup. And just looking by these houses, it definitely appears that there's quite a bit of poverty just directly across the railroad, which appears to be a dividing line in the town of Gallup. It is hilly and beautiful up here. I did not realize Gallup was gonna be this hilly, but it makes sense. Now, obviously the poverty that you see here isn't only in this side of Gallup. It's more indicative of New Mexico as a whole. New Mexico actually has the sixth lowest median household income of any state at $54,000 which is 27.6% below the US median, which is $74,600. Over here on the left, we have Bubbany Park. That actually looks like quite a nice park. We have uh, a, I don't think it's abandoned actually. But while the median household income in New Mexico is only $54,000, in Gallup, it's $10,000 lower at just $44,000 or 41% below the US median. The per capita income here is actually just $15,700, which is almost one third the US per capita income of $42,000. Now, of course, homes here are also a little bit cheaper than they're going to be in most of the country. The median home value is $200,000. Oh, look at this, Sky City Park. And that is a beautiful view of the town of Gallup. Wow. And the view from this Sky City Park is stupendously beautiful. You can see the whole town of Gallup. You can see all of the surrounding hills. I bet this is a great place to watch sunset. And yeah, it's in the middle of this not that nice neighborhood, but even the quote unquote poor neighborhood, it doesn't seem that bad. I've been to very poor parts of the Midwest, even poor parts of Los Angeles. Like I am so glad that I ended up coming to Gallup because it really does not look nearly as bad as the internet and stats would have you believe. And there is Interstate 40 running directly in front of the historic city center of Gallup. And even the trailer homes appear to be relatively nice. Like I'm sure there is actual crime in Gallup. I don't wanna discount all of the stats, but the story that the stats tell and the story that I have seen thus far, they don't appear to match. This is just a stunning overlook. It's so iconic hearing the train blasting its horde. 
Now, the median home value in Gallup, New Mexico is around $203,000, which yes, probably appears to be pretty cheap, but compared to what the incomes are out here, it's actually a lot more expensive than most parts of the country with incomes this low. For instance, places like Alabama, Mississippi, you're gonna be able to get nice homes for $120,000 to $150,000, but it doesn't appear nearly as bad as I would've thought. All the homes seem to be, uh, okay, maybe not all of the homes appear to be lived in. That one, yeah, that one's been abandoned for some time. Wait, there's cars in it. I don't know, is it abandoned? The actual poverty rate in the town of Gallup is 25.3% in the city limits, and in the county, it is 33.6%. So maybe more of the abject poverty is in the reservations. I'm sure the poverty is much higher on the reservations. But it looks so much nicer than you would think of when you think of the worst neighborhood in a city with a 25% poverty rate, where over 27% of children live in poverty. The paint is starting to chip off on a lot of these houses, but at least the foundations seem sturdy. All of them, oh, that's interesting. All of the roofs over there are white. I wonder why that is. I love how hilly this city is. I am a sucker for a good view, and Gallup, at least on this north side of town, has some incredible, incredible views. It gets really steep too. How are these homes so affordable? If you had this house in a big city somewhere, these would be almost million dollar properties. I also love how there's a lot of natural rock still remaining. New Mexico has some beautiful gems, beautiful stones, beautiful minerals all throughout the state. I think it actually has the most turquoise deposits of anywhere in the country. Now up here on the left, this trailer home yeah, this one right here is a three bed, two bath. I just looked it up on Zillow. It is for sale for $180,000. Let's go take a look at it a little bit closer. Yep, that could be your home for 180 grand. Over here we have a chapel. Oh, there's a little mini church. And up there it says, Merry Christmas. I have to say, of all of the quote unquote impoverished towns that I've been in, this has perhaps the most character, perhaps the most charm. Oh, look at that, okay. Like even that building over there, it looks abandoned, it says no trespassing, but the little fence in front of it is so cute. And this is a very steep road. Wow, where am I going right now? If you wanna see where I am on a map now, that is downtown Gallup. The north side neighborhood up here might be the nicer side of the north neighborhood. Maybe this area is the more impoverished side. As you can see by the houses directly on my left, these do not look to be in good condition. And there's just empty, abandoned lots up here. Beware of the dog. And I have no idea what this section is straight ahead. It looks interesting though. I just, I love these hills. Of course, every city has its poor neighborhoods, its more affluent neighborhoods. We're gonna go to a few of the more affluent neighborhoods in just a sec. But usually the more affluent population would want to live in the hills. They would want to have the views. Maybe the views in the south are just that much better. But so far this north neighborhood, so far Gallup in general, has just been a very pleasant surprise. Over here it says Larry Bryan Mitchell Recreation Center. That's that building that I just saw earlier. I love just how much art is in this town. There's statues everywhere. Oh, and we have some old trains. Yeah, let's park here. Apparently this We The People Park tells a little bit about the history as a coal mining town, a railroad town, obviously, as well as the indigenous history here. Oh, what is that? Anna? Is that a, what is that? Is that a gopher? Oh, it's a prairie dog. It's literally a prairie dog. And yes, running off away, we have a prairie dog. Oh, that's its home down there. Wow. Yeah, it literally lives just down in that hole. So I guess here we have a little bit of a running course. Four laps equals one mile. And this is a little park just directly north of Interstate 40, where you have a lot of artistic depictions of the history. Wow, that is so cool how they like incorporated the rocks to look like someone pulling coal. Here's a coal mine worker. I don't know what this artistic style is. It's some type of surreal, but this is one of my favorite styles of art and I'm so glad that Gallup has been able to incorporate it. I wonder if this is one of the old locomotives. And over here we have a mermaid. I don't think, actually no, there is the Puerco River 
which should be just right down there. I think it's dry this time of year and it only fills up for maybe a month or two out of the year. It's a pretty dry region of the country. And it is actually at a high elevation. Gallup sits at about 6,500 feet above sea level, which means even though it is a dry, semi-arid environment, it doesn't get too, too hot. Right now at around 1 p.m., it is 87 degrees. And the high for the day on August the 2nd, 2024, so the heart of summer, is gonna be 89 degrees. I wonder what these rocks signify over here. It says rock concert. Oh, I get it. It's like a rock and roll concert, but it's a concert where the crowd is literally just rocks and then that's the star of the stage. This, the artists in Gallup are so creative. But to get back into the weather and the geography of Gallup, New Mexico in general has some of the highest elevation cities in the country. Albuquerque, the biggest city in New Mexico, is over a mile high. And Santa Fe is actually the highest elevation capital city in the country at 7,200 feet above sea level. Gallup, as I mentioned earlier, is a little lower at 6,500 feet above sea level. But of course, as with most semi-arid regions that are high elevations, there are huge, huge temperature swings throughout the day. This morning when I first arrived here at around 8 a.m., it was 62 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning in the last five hours, there's been about a 25 degree temperature swing. And I wonder what this art installation is here. It's like everyone in Kumbaya, all sorts of different backgrounds, holding hands, rejoicing, maybe celebrating Gallup's very diverse history. But the average summertime high in Gallup is in the mid 80s to low 90s during the day. And then the low is in the mid 50s to low 60s. So it's around a 30 degree temperature swing on average. In the winter time, it's usually around the mid 40s to low 50s during the day. And then the mid teens to low 20s at night. There are 280 sunny days per year in Gallup, New Mexico. Of course, the reason why a lot of people like living in the American Southwest is just how many sunny days you get here. Gallup is at a higher elevation and there are summertime thunderstorms, so it's not quite a place like Phoenix or Las Vegas, which hardly gets any rain. There are 10.7 inches of annual rainfall, and then in the wintertime, there's actually 33.8 inches of annual snowfall. But look at this depiction. What is this massive humanoid-like figure on the left? and then it's someone carving out a statue. So it's a statue of someone carving a statue. And what's that over there? Is that a Native American art piece of some kind? Oh, there's a little, I wonder if this is the river. I think this might be. Yeah, there's a little bridge, or at least it appears that the sewerway, oh, there is an animal down there. But yeah, there's a little pathway down here. Let's check this out. So it looks like water does run down here. Have they crafted it so that the river, when there is a lot of rainfall, goes underground? Oh, that is cool. There's like a whole tunnel down here. Wow. Echo! So this tunnel goes underneath the freeway and then you could walk to the actual city of Gallup from this north side of town. And then it looks like there's another tunnel that goes under that road up there. If there are any locals from Gallup that could explain to me about the history of the river, about these tunnels and whatnot. But as we're back at this art piece, which seems to depict the very diverse history of Gallup, how about we get into the demographics of just how diverse Gallup still is today? What does it say? Human knowledge. Does anyone know if this is trying to depict some political event that occurred in Gallup history? So these are all agenda. And what does this sign here say? It says... Quorum. So there is a lady selling snow cones just out of the back of her truck over there. We have that beautiful art installation on this road just north of Interstate 40. But let's cross back on the other side of Interstate 40 across the Puerto River. Oh, Emma Estrada. Yeah, that's that little bridge and the tunnels that I just walked in. But let's get back into the demographics. There are an estimated 21,672 residents of Gallup today. The median age is 34.1 years. 49.35% of the population is male. 50.65% of the population is female. Whereas in New Mexico, it's about 50.2% of the population being female. Oh, and over there is the dry Puerco River. 
and there seems to be an abandoned train. Oh, over here is the El Rancho Hotel. So this is one of the historic hotels that was built after there were a lot of Western films filmed in town. They needed to have a nice accommodation for all the movie stars to live. Let's go park there and tell you a little bit about the history of the Hotel El Rancho. Yeah, that's a, this is a very nice hotel, wow. It's got character. Everything in Gallup seems to have so much character. And across the street, we have identified our first dispensary thus far, Prohibition 37, the science of cannabis. This main road, of course, is historic Route 66. We are about a mile and a half up the road from downtown Gallup. And this is the Hotel and Motel El Rancho, originally built in 1937 is a place to host film crews since they needed to have quote-unquote fancy accommodation. Some of the most famous movies that were filmed in Gallup include Billy the Kid, Pursued, The Sea of Grass, Four Faces West, Only the Valiant, Ace in the Hole, A Distant Trumpet, and The Hallelujah Trail. And some of the most famous actors who actually stayed, oh, I think that is the motel up there, and then this is the fancier hotel. Yeah, this is just, this is stunning on the outside. And there's a well. But some of the most famous actors that actually stayed here include John Wayne, Kirk Douglas, Ronald Reagan, Spencer Tracy, Katherine Hepburn, and Humphrey Bogart. This store will remain locked. Yeah, let's go inside and see what the interior looks like. If it's still in original condition from 1937, I think it is, wow. So I guess it's a functioning hotel and still a big tourist attraction in town. Yeah, what a lobby. Uh, there's a cool little mural over here. Utah, Arizona, El Moy del Reino de Nuevo, Mexico. Oh, and I guess it's a map showing all the different reservations and tourist attractions in the area. I've heard Rainbow Natural Bridge is gorgeous, about 45 miles northwest of here. Oh, maybe we'll go to Canyon de Shelley. I've heard that's beautiful as well. And then, El Moro National Monument. That's where I believe an old ancestral Puebloan uh, remains still exists. Yeah, there is just so much history and so much stunning nature throughout the state of New Mexico. Oh, I guess the Spanish arrived in New Mexico in 1540. And these are the hallways. Yeah, I love how they've, like it looks modern and it looks very upkept, but at the same time, it maintains that old historic charm. How you guys doing? Pretty good, how you doing? Good. Yeah, and I love all this art on these walls. I love the light fixtures too. It all just, this is so cool. Well, this is an interesting building on the left here. It also looks like those summertime thunderstorms I was talking about earlier, the afternoon showers may be appearing quite soon. It is currently 2.03 p.m. I am going to head to the Hill neighborhood of Gallup, which is apparently the most affluent part of town. Although looking by these houses on the left, it just feels like all the neighborhoods are almost a hodgepodge of nicer homes, not so nice homes. There's been a lot of people selling snow cones. But yeah, there seems to not necessarily be any order to the neighborhoods. Look at this home on the right. It's not necessarily a bad thing. That's Jenny's Flowers. I wonder if that's actually a store. But yeah, you have like a nice Spanish casita style home right there next to a chain wood fence style home over there next to a church in a building that doesn't have any windows. Oh, look at this home. That is a beautiful, beautiful property. But then directly next to this beautiful, beautiful property, you have something like this. But to get back into the race demographics of town, there's actually no majority of any race in Gallup. The largest group is Native American, which makes up 44.1% of the population. Hispanic Americans make up 31.4% of the population. 18.1% of the population is white non-Hispanic. 3.5% is Asian, which I guess goes back to the Japanese roots in town. Apparently there's still a lot of Japanese families who have been here over 100 years. 1.5% of the population is black. 1.3% is two or more races. And then 0.2% is Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. Now up there is the Ford Canyon natural area. And on my right is Gallup Middle School, which is not in session right now, obviously, as it is summertime. The football field is pretty nice. For a middle school, that's a nice football field. The actual school building itself 
doesn't look like it has been nearly as well maintained. In loving memory of Noah Howe and his beautiful smile made by his fellow classmates. I'd assume that is some tragic tale, but yeah, this middle school it does not look that well upkept. And an interesting fact to go back to Gallup's history as a huge immigration center, 7.6% of the population today is still foreign born. They were not born in the United States. And the vast majority of people that I've talked to seem to say that most of these races get along just fine. There doesn't seem to be much tension. Oh, what's this building up here? It is just so hilly up here. This is beautiful. I understand why they call this neighborhood The Hill. Don't get me wrong, these homes on the more affluent side of town certainly have great views as well. But at least for me, if I want a stunning view from high up on a hill, I would prefer the view to be of downtown as well as additional hills. South of here, the views seem to be just of natural sites as well as this building. I wonder if that's the hospital. That thunderstorm seems to be getting closer and closer, but over here on the left, this is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So there is a Mormon church in town. I would be curious to see what percentage or what the religion demographics are in Gallup. What percentage is Mormon? Because I didn't hear too much about, I know Mormons are in Arizona, I know they're in Utah, Idaho, Wyoming. I've never heard of Mormons being in New Mexico. Now, if you wanna see where I am on the map, downtown Gallup is northwest of me. That's that north side neighborhood on the other side of the train tracks. I am in the southeast portion of town, right by the Rehoboth McKinley Christian Healthcare Center. So yes, this building in front of me is the hospital. And so far, the homes on this side of town definitely appear to be a lot nicer than on the north side of town. Very quaint, very cozy, secluded, surrounded by trees and all sorts of plants. This home that I'm driving to up here is actually for sale right now. Five bed, four bath, I think it's 3,000 something square feet for $540,000. Oh, and that is a mat. That's one of the longest homes I have ever seen. And that is fascinating. There's like this whole medical center area with built up buildings, probably a few miles south of the downtown area. But it's not too far away. Yeah, this is the main building of the hospital, I believe. And then I think that building straight ahead is actually the University of Gallup or University of New Mexico Gallup, which is a community college. It's a two year university, but it's still correlated with the UNM branch. And there is a squirrel. I have never seen a squirrel with a tail like that. And I parked up behind the hospital, which is so much bigger than you would expect a city of 21,000 people to have. Over there in the distance is Red Rock, which is one of the most beautiful parks in this area. That rock on the left, I believe, is Pyramid Rock. And then over there is Navajo Church. We're gonna be checking those out later today as well. But to go off of that, just looking at the surrounding scenery, New Mexico has so many hikes. And I think one of the biggest pros of Gallup, New Mexico, is that there are so many beautiful hikes and sorts of outdoor recreation that you can get yourself up to within an hour or even a 30 minute drive, honestly. I think this building, oh yeah, look at how the cacti, there are so many different types of vegetation. I guess it is a high desert, but because of these afternoon showers in the summertime, it's quite lush. The soil itself is still moist. It probably rained one of these last few days. And over there is the University of New Mexico Gallup branch, which has an enrollment of around 2,100 kids, or I guess 10% of the population. I am now coming up on the south side of town to 2nd Street, which was that main road downtown that went north to south. We are going to drive up it from the south because I just looked at the weather forecast and it's supposed to rain within the next 10 minutes or so. And I did not want to be caught outside in the afternoon shower. The old Santa Fe Railroad Depot, which was the original divisional terminal back from the late 1800s, has apparently been converted now into the Gallup Cultural Center. It's still the same old building, but now there's a really cool museum going over the history of Gallup. And look at this, there's just... Oh, it's a barber shop. So this old strip mall does not look to be too well upkept either. So it's interesting, parts of the town look very nice, but as soon as you get a little bit outside of the downtown area, apart from that Hills neighborhood, a lot of the town kind of looks derelict. Yeah, so like that sign over it, why don't they just take that sign down? 
The taco shack? I'm, I bet that's probably pretty good food. This is more the style of home that you would see in Santa Fe, New Mexico. What's this building here on the left? Is the United States Post Office. Oh, look at that. It uh, almost looks abandoned. What is that net casing on it? And then McKinley County Courthouse. Oh, we're back at the courthouse. Would you look at that? So we're back downtown now where we have plenty of murals. This is Camille Sidewalk Cafe. I've actually heard that place is quite good. And oh, this is the children's library. Look at that, that is pretty. We have a dog in the back. And holy, he is a cute one. And here are a few more of the businesses on Historic Route 66. Jules Java. Yeah, it is starting to get very windy. That rain is about to come down hard. And here we have the Multicultural Center, which is in the same building as the Santa Fe Railroad Depot. And yeah, look at that train showing all the different routes. It looks like it has already started raining on that side of Gallup. It has started to get very windy, but I've noticed that the Amtrak actually stops here. I think this is actually the Amtrak station in Gallup, New Mexico. Yeah, Gallup, New Mexico Amtrak. But before it starts raining, I wanted to check out this skate park. Look at this. We got a few people skating. Gallup Skate Park. Be responsible, have fun. Wow. For a city of only 20,000 people, Gallup certainly has a lot of amenities. Over there, we have a place called Juggernaut Music, New Mexico Pottery Company. Yeah, this is just beautiful. Imagine skating up and down here. You got the old rocks, and then you just got these hills that have had mining camps. This building is the Southwest Indian Foundation Project Office. I'm not sure if that means the building was built in 1919, but that would probably check out. It seems most of the buildings on this street were built either in the late 1890s or at least around the time that Route 66 opened in 1926. There's so many of these beautiful old facades which just seem abandoned now. But over here we have a chart of downtown Gallup. Oh, it tells you what everything is. You guys can pause the video. Oh, a downtown flea market. Yeah, I've heard on Saturdays there's a really big flea market in Gallup with tons of Native Americans from all the different reservations selling their arts and crafts. And over here we have the old route. Yeah, Gallup is right there. Grants would be the next major city on Interstate 40. So I guess the old Santa Fe Railroad just followed Interstate 40 all the way, Holbrook, I was there, yeah, all the way to Flagstaff. And this here says Arthur T. Hannett was mayor of Gallup from 1918 to 1922, and then he became the governor of New Mexico from 1924 to 1926. He was not the governor when the riot came to town and then they declared martial law, but he still was a governor of New Mexico. This car is patrolled by private police. But I just felt my first raindrop, so it is time to go inside the George Galanis Multicultural Center. Oh, I guess this would be a depiction of a Japanese American during World War II. Oh no, that's the Navajo Kotaker exhibit. Oh, is it not open? I think maybe we have to go around on the other side. There's another beautiful statue of a man holding a bow and arrow. Oh, so this building is still the Amtrak station. Like that's the actual on-ramp where you get on your train. And apparently two passenger trains, Amtrak trains, do still come through town every day. Yeah, so it appears that we enter the Cultural Center and Angeles Cafe from this east side entrance. Oh, so this is Angeles Cafe here. So you enter through Angeles Cafe and then it becomes a museum. This is a cute little cafe. Oh, and there's tons of old... So this must have been the old waiting room, I guess. Lots of old photos. Hey, how you doing? Good. So is the museum this way? Yes, the elevator on the left. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I guess we take an elevator to get into the museum. North American Indian cultures, the legacy of language and inspired ideas. Wow, so it just goes into all the different tribes in the different parts of North America. And over here we have the Hopi, the Zuni, the Navajo, and the Jemez. And this I guess is the gallery and museum and theater. Storyteller museum. Wow, this is quite big actually. Yeah, this must have been the Santa Fe Railroad. All the different stops, so it went from Kansas City all the way to Las Vegas, Las Vegas, New Mexico, and then Santa Fe, Albuquerque, Gallup, Winslow, 
and all the way to Los Angeles eventually. Gallery of the masters, the chosen ones, the Navajo code talkers. Despite their isolation, the Navajo people were very aware of the dark war clouds developing in both Europe and Eastern Asia. A year and a half before the Japanese attack on Hawaii, the Navajo Tribal Council passed resolution NCJ 540, which pledged its loyalty to aid and defend the United States, including the inclusion of Navajo people for military service. When the United States plunged into World War II, Navajos flocked to the recruiting stations. Soon young Navajo teenagers who had grown up in a high dry desert environment were sloshing through the insect infested jungles of Guadalcanal, New Guinea, and the Philippines. Over 1,500 Navajos served in the Marines, while additional hundreds served in the Army, Navy, Air Corps, and Women's Army Corps. By the time the war was over, there were more enlistments among American Indians in proportion to their numbers than any other racial group in the country. Wow, I did not know that. The importance of language during World War II was highly relevant. The ability to maintain secrets utilizing the power of the Navajo language gave American soldiers the advantage they didn't think they had during the war. These Navajo soldiers were quote-unquote lifesavers in every sense of the word. Philip Johnston, son of a missionary who spent many years in the Western Navajo Reservation, changed the course of the war by proposing to some Marine officers the idea of using the Native American language as a basis for the combat code. 29 young Navajos, most of them still in high school at the time, were recruited for the initial training program. Following basic training, they were told the true nature of their mission. After devising an initial code of 211 words plus a word for each letter of the alphabet, the code talkers participated in every major operation in the Pacific Theater, gave the Marines a critical advantage throughout the war. It felt good to know we were the only ones who could do this useful thing. We swore that we would protect the code with our lives and we kept our word. Wow, so that's a little more in-depth into the history of the Navajo Code Talkers. Oh, and I guess this photo here is their reunion. When was this? This looks not too long ago. I wonder how many of them, if any of them are still alive today. If they were in high school during World War II, that would put them at around in their 90s today? Oh, so here it says the secret of the Navajo code talkers alphabet. Wadachi is A, Shush is B, Moasi is C. So each Navajo word stood for one letter in the alphabet. And this is the Storyteller Museum, which I think is going to get more into the ancient human history of this region. The Acosta Rug from 1930, mining coal. In 1850, army surveyors discovered coal in the area. Oh, I thought it was 1882. Okay, in the 1880s is when coal mining started. The smokestack you see was built in 1920. This helped to supply electricity for the town of Gallup. And by 1926, there were 21 active coal mines. And we are hopefully going to be checking out at least one or two of said coal mines in the surrounding hills. Traditional trading post. Yeah, so there have been trading posts in this area for at least 100 years. And there's the train going by again, just like it does every 20 to 30 minutes. The Mother Road, Route 66. Oh, and this is how they wove this exact, I think this is the exact same rug that they're weaving right there. That is fascinating. So this was constructed in the 1930s. And there's even a movie on the Navajo Code Talkers in the cinema. Guess they're not showing it, but for a free attraction, this Gallup Cultural Center, I have been so pleasantly surprised. That was such a cool in-depth look in the Navajo Code Talkers, as well as a lot of the art in this region. But I actually just got a message from the Gallup Coffee Company that someone else wants to be interviewed. So let's head back to said Gallup Coffee Company and talk to Tia. And this is Tio or Lena. You said you grew up in Gallup? Yeah, I grew up here. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're good. I was here until I decided I wanted to go to college. And I moved back. It's more relaxed here, I think, from the city life. That's why. And you said you moved to Albuquerque for college? Yeah. What's your favorite thing about Gallup um, or this whole area in general? There's a lot more art here. Yeah. I like the people in general. They're more relaxed. The Albuquerque was too busy for you? Yeah. It was too busy in a sense of the traffic. Everybody seemed like they're angry. <laughs> there was a lot of crime. Apparently Gallup is also, it has a very high crime rate. Do you feel that in Gallup or? Not really. The crime here is different from like cities. It's more more so individual crime, not violent crime that I've seen. Is it mostly like people that already know each other? Or? Um, yeah, I think so. There's a lot of okay. domestic violence oh, and okay. um, there's a lot of drunken disorderly behavior and so they get picked up off of the streets oh, really? because public intoxication. Yeah, there's oh. a lot of that. But yeah, just walking around, it doesn't feel dangerous at all, I'd say. Yeah, it's not really dangerous. I feel comfortable walking around here at night. Definitely wouldn't feel comfortable in Albuquerque walking around at night. Really? Yeah. Okay. So 
Albuquerque feels a lot more dangerous. Oh, definitely. I've witnessed violent crime there. I haven't witnessed really any crime here. Oh, okay. So would you say that's the biggest misconception about Gallup or is there a different? I think that is. There is a huge mis misunderstanding that, so this town, they used to call it Drunk Town USA because there was a lot of bars here. I think they closed a lot of them, but it used to be pretty bad to where people were literally dying in or outside the bars. <laughs> Just like drinking themselves to mm -hmm. death. Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, people were driving drunk and causing accidents all over the place. So that's where a lot of the crime was, yeah. I, oh. I think it still happens a lot. There's a couple bars down here, or I think one up the street. No, there's not one. Yeah, there is. Um, that one, they often do have a lot of violence after hours when you know people are leaving. But I don't know about more recently. It's, so it's a lot less now than like when you were growing up? Yeah, okay. definitely. Now, since I've moved back, I haven't really seen a whole lot of drunk driving, although that is a big issue as well here. So I guess what is the biggest difference from when you were growing up versus now? Is it that a lot of businesses have closed since then? or I think different types of businesses have opened since then, but the main ones that kind of give character to this town, they've stayed open. Mm -hmm. The mom and pop shops. There's a lot of mom yeah. and pops and trading posts, art galleries, like mm -hmm. a lot of art, yeah. I think that's my favorite thing about this town is the art. I guess it kind of charms you in a way because I didn't think I was ever gonna move back here. <laughs> I'm like, I would never, and here I am, and I'm enjoying it. I think mostly I enjoy my job too. And what's your job? Um, I work for a youth mentorship program here. It's a lot different from what I was doing in Albuquerque. I was working in behavioral health for 14 years and that took a toll on me. Yeah. And so here you just work with the youth, the kids of, mm -hmm. from the reservations too or just? Yeah, go? definitely. Okay. I run some school programs and they're out in rural areas. The farthest one is in Navajo and that's about an hour away. So then I guess to go off of that, what are the main jobs in this area? Um, that you know of. The shops or, you know, the businesses here are what people mostly do. There used to be factories and stuff, but some of them have closed. Some of them maybe partly due to the pandemic. There's some work here, but there's not a lot of work, honestly. People are always struggling to find jobs here. Would you say most people, after they reach their 20s, they move to Albuquerque or yeah. away from town? Mm -hmm. There's not many people my age. <laughs> really? Yeah. To go off of that then, is that hard? Or like, I guess like dating or... Oh yeah, I, I don't date here. You don't date, okay. No. Are there places where young people hang out? Um, not really. There's not a lot of social stuff here and everybody seems to be like an introvert here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of gamers here or there's this thing that they're all doing now is Pokemon Go. People are still doing Pokemon Go yes. here? Yes. Wow. They have like a group of them here now and have like meetups. That's their way of socializing. Obviously Gallup's a very diverse place. It always has been. Have you noticed any racial tensions or does it seem like ever you have noticed? Okay. Mm -hmm. In what way? If you don't mind expanding. It's all over the place. Natives are sometimes racist against their own blood, and then natives are sometimes racist against the Caucasian people here, and then the opposite. Caucasians being racist toward Native Americans. I think it happens quite often. It's almost like people are just used to it, which is really sad. I don't know what it is. I don't understand that side of it, why people look down on other people. Is it like blatant, or is it mostly just like excluding people that look different? Well, so I think there's a lot of tension because there's a lot of resistance resentment from Native American people here toward all of the business owners and the people that run the city. Are most of the businesses not owned by Natives? No. Oh. Almost all of them are not. We don't have a whole lot of people in management or political scene that are Native American. So, sorry. Oh no, you're okay. That is, that's so funny. That always happens when I'm having a conversation with somebody. Like, I get muted by it. Well, it seems like it's every 20, 25 minutes, yeah. That bothers me about this town. Really? The trade? <laughs> Yeah. Does it wake you up in the middle of the night? No, I live actually outside of the city. It's not a problem where I live. It's where I work because I work a couple streets from here and I can hear it rattling. But if you want to expand now on resentment from not many indigenous people in management? Yeah, I think they don't, a lot of people don't go about it the right way. They just displace their anger in other means, even towards themselves, get involved in addiction. That That's a huge problem here too. Is it's addiction? Addiction, yeah. Just alcohol or? Mostly alcohol, but also meth has found its way here. Where I work now, we find the foils and the paraphernalia on our front porch. 
porch because oh, wow. there's like a little private area and they love that spot. <laughs> but it's a huge problem now. It's become more and more obvious. And would you say the general sentiment of town then is a feeling of hopelessness or is there optimism for a brighter future? There's a lot of optimism, I feel like. However, I'm not sure about statistics on our population because it's not accurate. Our population changes even by the weekend. Like everyone from the reservations, they flood here. So we can't really know who actually lives here because a lot of it is not documented. So I don't know if the population is growing or dying because they don't like it here. It, there's nothing to do really. <laughs> and that drives people into things like addiction. I think there is a sense of hope though for people that if they love this town, they try to do what they can in the community. Those are the ones that stick around. Yeah, it seems like there's just a lot of art in general. Like a lot of artistic people are here. Yeah, they're really bored. Wanna... Oh, they're bored, oh, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just think a more relaxed life gives you, I guess a broader perspective, especially being around so much beauty and the nature and all that. It inspires people. Yeah. And having the time to just sit and do art is important for people here. Would you ever want to move someplace else or do you think you would stay in Gallup for a while? Mm, I'm planning on moving. I'm not sure where exactly I'm gonna end up. I had been looking into Arizona. And is all your family still here? Um, yeah, most of my family is okay. here, yeah. And that's part of the reason why I moved back. And then I guess finally, what does Gallup mean to you? Ooh, interesting question. Secluded? I don't know. <laughs> I would say it's timeless in a yeah. sense. I feel like we are 15 years behind. I don't think we have Uber. We maybe have DoorDash, but there's not a whole lot of upgraded stuff here. Some businesses only take cash. When I first moved here, I thought that was really interesting. I'm like, wow. I don't have cash. <laughs> I mean, it feels like at least there's a lot of character because of all the old storefronts. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I like that they value like a lot of the old buildings. They try to upkeep and make sure that we can still have the old town here. They redid this entire street right here. Oh, so really? that Yeah. So that they could put in the, the drainage system and all that and redid the entire pavement. And it took a couple years, but people were so pleased with it because now we have this thing called Arts Crawl and it brings the entire entire town together. Is it so, like once a month? There's a big art show here? Yeah, it's two or no, once a month, uh, the second week of every month, all of these light up. And so it's when oh, it's dark. Oh, all these yeah. lights. Okay, that's cool. So it's cool. pretty. And then it gets really crowded and people share their artwork and they sell it. And we, they just have booths. The police block it off on both ends. All of the local artists sell their stuff. So I'm always trying to find something really cool. I think that's where we all socialize because <laughs> there's live once music. A month. Yeah, once a month <laughs> to get it out of our systems. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Lena. It is now two in the afternoon and the theater is open. But most of the old mining camps have now actually been converted into actual towns in the surrounding areas of Gallup. So let's head to a few of those and see if we can see any remnants of the old coal mines. Instead of 7-Eleven, it's called 2711 food store. I guess there's another railroad crossing. Oh, that is fascinating. So there's a different railroad that went north. This was a division terminal, so it makes sense. And over here at the intersection of Interstate 40 and US Highway 491, which goes north into Navajo Nation, is where we have most of the chain stores. There we have Panda Express, we got Burger King. Oh shoot, I gotta get in front of this guy. There's a Hobby Lobby, there's a Home Depot, and I think Walmart should be just up here as well as the Comfort Inn, Cracker Barrel, Hampton Inn and Suites. Yeah, so all of your chain stores are gonna be at the intersection of the two main highways in town. Now, Highway 491 was originally Highway 666. They actually changed the name in 2003 because of all the devil connections. It was actually even nicknamed the Devil's Highway and there were apparently a lot of paranormal and abnormal sightings in this remote stretch of the highway. There have been many accidents on the highway. Now over here though, yeah, so this is where the Walmart is, right next to the Home Depot. So Gallup may not be the biggest town, but you do have your essentials. Do it yourself, repair shop, Home Depot, and you got your department store, Walmart. And anything you can't buy at Walmart, you can get on Amazon. But as soon as we leave this Walmart and Home Depot section, it just becomes the wilderness of Gallup. And boy, oh boy, is this natural landscape beautiful. I am heading straight north to what is currently Cold Basin. 
which was the old historic mining town of Clarkville. Clarkville was founded sometime in the early 1900s, and it was a coal mining camp with a school, a library, a hospital, and an electrical plant. And as we're coming up on the modern day Clarkville, oh, it says we are leaving Gallup, not a truck route. Okay, I understand. Yeah, there are a lot of dirt roads. As soon as you leave Gallup, it literally immediately becomes a dirt road. And over here, it just looks like a abandoned junkyard. There's like a lot of, it's like a scrapyard. That is interesting. So this whole area that you see here used to be Clarkville. I'm sure there was probably a coal mine just up in that hill somewhere. Yeah, this is just a scrapyard now. That is fascinating. Now, compared to other mining camps at the time, Clarkville was actually deemed family friendly because there was no saloon and it actually prohibited the sale of liquor. The community peaked in population in 1905 with around 400 inhabitants, but by 1910, it had already become a ghost town and the rain is starting to come down. You can see the little raindrops on my windshield. Yeah, is this town literally just a scrapyard now? Huh. How strange. And over here it says, can money. I wonder what that means. Yeah, this whole area looks to be just a scrapyard. Okay, no, there are some homes up here as well. There's a few homes on the left. Yeah, I wonder, I would imagine there was an old coal mine up in that hill. You can see there's even a little electrical plant or something next to it. Oh, look at that. It is just cars as far as the eye can see. Hey, doggy. <laughs> There's some old vans for sale, some trailer homes, private property. So I guess there isn't much left of Clarkville. It did become a ghost town 114 years ago, so it makes sense that almost none of the original town would still remain. Oh, that's actually a fascinating house over there. It's got like a blue porch front yeah look at that a lot of trailer parks a lot of rvs this is modern day coal basin and while it doesn't look like much of corkville still remains i am now gonna head up to what was the largest coal mining camp back when this was a coal mining region gamer co i wonder what that building is over there it looks maybe like a asian restaurant and yes directly on my right somewhere in those hills over there is the gibson mine i believe you can actually hike to it if i'm not mistaken it looks like there's some trails on the map up to it it was opened in 1882 it was the very first mine in the area and it's directly across from gamer co which was the largest mining town in the area i think i'm going to turn not up that road yeah there's a lot of water on the road right now but up here on my left is the town of gamer co which was originally founded Back in the late, oh wow, look at all that water. I guess the drainage is not the best in these parts. I wonder what all those buildings are up there. Wow, look at that. Navajo shopping. Eagle ready mixed concrete, authorized personnel only. Now it looks like there's still a lot of old machinery from perhaps 100, 140 years ago. Gamerco is the largest mining town in the whole Gallup vicinity. It was built to support the coal mines as there were a lot of mines in the immediate area and it had a lot more resources compared to the other camps. The company town had a meat market, a golf course, a clubhouse, a shower house for miners, tennis courts, swimming pool, and even a baseball park. Now it appears that since then Gamerco has fallen into disrepair. It is not in nearly as great of condition as I'm sure it was 100 years ago or even longer ago. I wouldn't be surprised if that building down there is over 100 years old. It looks like it hasn't been used in a long time. And I think those are the old coal plants. Wow. Oh, and look at this one over there. That is a fascinating, it's like a castle. So Gamerco on the map, if you want to see, Gallup is right down here. This is the whole town. It does have a very bare bones mining camp style of layout that I think it still represents today. Yeah, so obviously all these buildings are newer, but if you want to kind of imagine what this old mining camp would have looked like, just imagine old miner huts, but the same layout of the streets. Oh, that is a 
dog just, oh, wh look at that house. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and go to that house. Yeah, so a lot of the roads in town appear to still be dirt. There's an American flag. Yeah, even over here, there's a lot of art. And there are a lot of seemingly feral dogs. Like, they don't have collars. I'm sure someone owns them. But they're just chilling on the street. Yeah, that is an interesting home. Yeah, so maybe this is the not-so-nice part of Gallup. It's technically another city. But the north side of Gallup, where I was at, which is apparently the impoverished and high-crime area of Gallup, that part of town seemed very nice compared to what I'm looking at now. But yeah, I wanted to drive by, oh, look at that one over there. But I wanted to drive by this house on the right again, because it looks almost completely burned down, like a fire ravaged it. This trailer home is not in the best of conditions, but it actually is a little aesthetic in my opinion. I like that green. Now I just looked up the demographics for GamerCo. Apparently the population of this town is 1,489. That's a lot bigger than I would have thought it to be. The median age is 27.6 years. About a third of the population is under the age of nine. Only about 9% of the population is over the age of 65. 58% is female while 42% is male. And the race demographics are 1% white, non-Hispanic. 33% Hispanic and 65% Native American. And sadly, as you can see, based on how a lot of the homes look here, the poverty rate is 49.4%. That is almost 50% of the people living below the poverty line, which is more than one and a half times the rate in the Gallup, New Mexico metropolitan area. And 63% of children live in poverty. But while I have covered a lot of the indigenous history as well as the coal mining history, I haven't explored too much of the natural scenery yet. So let's head to the beautiful Red Rock Park around 15 miles to the east of Gallup. The rain is really starting to come down now. Look at that beautiful shot. Look at that old mill up there, power plant. Speedway Power Sports, American Muffler Auto Parts, and a lot of hay, as well as a few old train cabs. And old... Oh, look at these buildings. And I'm sure it would get annoying having to wait for these trains if you're a local here every single day, at least a hundred times a day. But I think it kind of sums up the timeless vibe that Gallup has. Like the railroad and the whole downtown area feels like it's from a hundred years ago. Yet you have Amazon containers going by on the railroad. And so the owner of the Richardson Trading Post actually messaged me to come back because they wanted to give me a gift. And this is that gift. Beautiful turquoise. And Larry inside of the Richardson Trading Post told me not to get on Interstate 40, but instead to just follow historic Route 66 the entire way to Red Rock. I am now about nine miles away from Red Rock Park, as you can see on the map. And this is what historic Route 66 looks like as soon as you get a little bit east of downtown Gallup. I passed the El Rancho already. There's a few outlets. Butler's. I wonder what Butler's is. There's a McDonald's, Burger King, Dairy Queen. All your chain stores seem to be up this way. But yeah, the town just gets surprisingly empty very quickly. Oh, that person is literally moving their trailer home right now. And as we approach Navajo Church in Pyramid Rock in Red Rock Park, there appears to be some type of mill or mining going on. I did hear there was a uranium mill spill back in 2003 in this region. Perhaps that is the uranium mine over there. Navajo Casino. Oh, so I guess this is where the main casino right next to Gallup would be. So this is no longer the city limits of Gallup. This has to be on the reservation now. That's actually quite a cool exterior of a casino. Ah, uh, hey, hey, thank you, come again. Pine Rock Navajo Casino. And then over there on the left, we have Pyramid Rock. And directly to its right is Navajo Church. And welcome to Red Rock Park Pyramid Trail Convention Center Outdoor Arena. Yeah, so apparently there's a whole convention center. There's a whole like concert hall and there's miles and miles of hiking trails to both Pyramid Rock as well as Navajo Church. Oh, there's even campgrounds. Pyramid Trail. So I'm assuming the trail to get to Pyramid Rock is straight ahead. Yeah, so the campground. Oh, people are camping right now. And that is Navajo Church. Oh, look at that rock face. 
It just goes straight down. That is at least, at least 100 feet tall. And as I'm sure you can guess by these massive red rocks all around me, this is Red Rock Park in Gallup, New Mexico. Over here, we have a Red Rock Museum as well as the Red Rock Convention Center. The Convention Center, I believe, is this building on the right. The museum is over here. And then Pyramid Rock, the trailhead, is all the way behind this building up about a mile or so. But for now, let's head in here. Oh, there's like a whole nice courtyard. I know that both of these rocks are sacred to the Navajo people, but I'm not sure exactly what their origin story of this area is. So I would love to experience it. Oh, what is this? So this is the park office entrance and museum. So this is the Red Rock Museum. It has all sorts of Native American art. Of course, Historic Route 66. That is a painting of this whole area that I'm in right now. Doesn't really talk much about the actual rocks themselves. Oh, here's some of the dolls of the Zuni people. Yeah, so I actually really wanted to check out the Zuni Pueblo, who are the descendants of the ancestral Puebloans. Unfortunately, most of the buildings, they're closed by five. It's already after five, so I'm not going to be able to actually go there. But I'm going to overlay some photos on the screen. They apparently still live in the same style of abode that they've lived in for hundreds of years. And many of the buildings date back to the 13th century. And what are these here? Are these recreations of the homes? I mean, this art is all just stunning. Oh, so over here it says the long walk. When the United States government gained control of the Southwest, it attempted to halt the developed system of sporadic warfare and raiding among the Navajo, Pueblo, and Spanish settlements. In 1864, after a complex series of battles, misunderstandings, and broken treaties, the government rounded up the Navajo people, forced them to walk 300 miles to east central New Mexico, and incarcerated the tribe at Fort Sumner. Yeah, we learned about that in school. That was a really sad part of our history. After four long years of hardship and despair, the government allowed the surviving Navajos to return to their destroyed fields and flocks on treaty-established reservation lands. The Long Walk and the Treaty of 1868 are remembered as a traumatic period in Navajo history from which the modern Navajo nation emerged. Yeah, so this over here is the Hopi Reservation, the Navajo Main Reservation, Farmington is up there and then Gallup is, yeah, so right there is Gallup. I still cannot get over just how much art is in the Gallup area and how these massive red rock cliffs are literally right in front of me. Like for comparison, look how this thing is huge. <laughs> and over here we got some beautiful dogs. Look at these guys. Hey, pup up. Oh, they're a little angry. Maybe I wanted to pet them. Maybe I shouldn't pet them. Way up there yonder though is Navajo Church. I want to get quite a bit closer to it. Apparently it's a 2.2 mile trail. And this here is the US post office for the town of Church Rock. The zip code is 87311. And the building, while the inside looks like a normal post office, this outer facade, it looks very, very old. Reminiscent of ghost towns and towns that were built between the 1880s and 1920s. But straight ahead, we have Church Rock Hiking Trail. Looks like there's some stables over here as well. I just cannot get over how smooth and massive these red rocks are. And this almost looks like an alien planet, the way that the lush green grows on the red rock. I tried to run from the stables to where I am now. I forgot that I'm at a higher elevation. I am already winded. I believe I'm probably at least 7,000 feet up right now. So I'm just gonna walk the rest of the way. I understand why they call New Mexico the land of enchantment. This trail is literally enchanting. And it looks like the trail now is gonna go around this rock. There's a big rock pile over there. Oh, there's a little lizard. You see that guy? Oh. Yeah, so I guess there's a river that comes through here during the rainy season, or maybe snowmelt runoff in the springtime. And just look at how many different types of minerals are in these rocks. Look at the layers. And I think the coolest thing about, oh, Echo. Oh, that is so cool. There's a little cave here. And if I stand directly over this hole, let go! Let go! What I wanted to say though is I think the coolest thing about this trail and Gallup in general is there's nobody on the trail. If you had a place this beautiful in California or Colorado, 
it would be packed with people. And I'm literally the only person walking this trail. In the preliminary research that I did before making this video, one of the things I saw countless locals say was their absolute favorite thing about living in Gallup is just how much easy access there is to beautiful outdoor recreation that isn't crowded at all. There are so many trails and parks within a two hour drive. And suddenly the trail is going into a little forest. This walk has been literal meditation. I understand how all the indigenous people here get their artistic mind from. When you grow up surrounded by this, art just is natural. Look at these steps that were carved into the stone as the trail goes around this sweeping canyon. This is so cool. Oh, and I go up this rock even more. And there is Navajo Church. I'm not gonna lie, when I initially came to Gallup, I thought it was going to be an impoverished, dangerous community whose heyday was long gone. Not only did it appear to not be nearly as dangerous as the stats make it out to be, what I found were some of the kindest, most genuine Americans I have ever met with great hearts and artistic spirits. So I guess the moral of the story is the stats don't always tell the full story, don't always paint the full picture, but the people of Gallup certainly do. Literally. Now I'm headed out east on a big road trip right now. If you have any other suggestions of off the beaten path destinations or small towns with fascinating histories on the east coast, please let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed my adventure to Gallup at least half as much as I did. And I'll see you all in around a week for my next adventure. Back on Interstate 40, I just crossed the Continental Divide. It's straight up ahead. You can see a rainbow. What an enchanting way to end my trip to the land of enchantment.